So I've got this Chevy Cruze here in the garage. It's another turbo Cruze. It's like the second one this week and they both pretty much have the same exact codes. The first one was my neighbors. And um, yeah, so not good, right? Super common on these things. It's got, they all got the same code. It's kind of like a mass airflow sensor performance code, engine under boost pressure, you know, basically boost pressure codes and things like that. And even lean codes and oxygen sensor codes. So my neighbor was ready to like start shooting the parts cannon at it, right? He was gonna throw like a mass airflow sensor at it, O2 sensors, blah, blah, blah. So he came over, looked at it. Turns out it has a bad turbo. I told him, don't waste any money on these stuff. All these parts are fine. It's the turbo that's no good. A few days later and we have a different cruise in the garage and what do you know same exact codes same exact problem so as you can see i pulled off the whole air intake tube i pulled out the oxygen sensor because i tried to get the camera in right there right where the oxygen sensor goes to so try to look at the uh, impeller on the turbo now, i didn't have much luck right there but what i wanted to do was use my compressed air and try to direct it right at that turbo and see if I could get the fan to move because my suspicion is that there's actually a lot of play in the shaft of the turbo. Um, but I really could not, no matter how much air pressure I blow directly at that impeller, I can't get it to spin. But I don't think it's necessary at this point because you can see I got my camera right here. <laughs> I got it taped. Look at the wall right next to that impeller. What do you see? See how the metal looks real shiny right there? You see that? And look at the impeller itself. It's hard to tell, but is it missing blades on it? I can't really tell. I mean, someone else might be able to pick it out. To me, it kind of looks like it's missing blades or something. Or maybe it's just a weird angle I'm at. But definitely, look at that wall right there. You see where the impeller is scratching the wall. That means there is play in that shaft. And one more thing I just noticed is if you look right above where the scratches are on the housing, does that look like a crack on the turbo housing? You see it right there? It definitely looks like a crack to me, but I mean, it's a done deal. Okay, we see these, uh, the grooves cut into the housing wall that I, I guarantee you, if I could get my fingers on that shaft, I would feel a ton of play in that thing. Just classic, classic stuff. These things just fail left and right. This, this young girl, she just bought this car. She said it's her first car. And unfortunately, it is what it is. So it's going to need a turbo. And what sucks is I got in this car, right? I think this is the first Cruze. What is this? I think it's an LT. Chevy yeah, Cruze little turbo. This is one of the first Cruzes I got in that have all leather interior. Usually they have like just regular cloth. And this seat is like sitting on like bricks. This is the most uncomfortable seat I've ever sat in. They might as well just have a solid piece of brick right here and a solid brick right here. And that's that's your seat. There you go. That's Chevy quality. That's what you could sit on. So like I said, she just bought this car. And the thing is, she didn't like buy it off of like someone on Facebook market or something. She bought it at an actual like small dealer. Okay. And I just dropped the freaking keys like an idiot. So they sold it to her with a blown turbo. I'm sure there's nothing she could do about it. It's one of those things where, you know, buy as is, whatever the hell is wrong with it. If you sign the papers and you drove away with it, it's yours. This is before I replace the turbo, just taking it out for a initial test drive. So you can see we're at a dead stop right now, zero miles per hour. I'm gonna go ahead and just floor it and just see what kind of power it has. This thing has like no power at all. Had the pedal all the way to the floor and we barely reached like 25, 30 miles per hour. Here goes our brand new turbo charger. Straight in from the mainland. And they want to make sure you know it's a turbo charger. It's even printed on the paper. It's printed on the plastic bag that houses the gaskets. They're not playing. They want you to make sure you got you get some real horsepower right here. So here's the car, I brought it into the garage. Uh, it sat overnight on the street and I made sure to make my trip as short as possible. As soon as I got in here, I shut the engine off so that it doesn't get too hot uh, while I'm working on it. All right, so if you look right here, you can see how there's a bit of oil leaking around here. So I want to go ahead and take off this tube and there goes the screw for it right there covered underneath all that crap. As soon as I touch the screw, this thing 
is completely loose and that's why it's actually leaking oil from here and we have the mass of oil underneath it that's not good you don't want anything that's feeding or returning from the turbo to be leaking like that so who knows that could have played a role in this turbo failing here's a pro tip for any car if they have an exposed plate like this that's just all cattywampus you see if you're going to be working in front right here all day take that plate off because it is going to be hurting you all day scratching you up cutting you especially on days like this where you're showing off your sweet kneecaps get rid of that thing okay put it away don't forget to put it back on the car of course but um trust me i speak from experience i did not mean to drop that but trust me i speak from experience this thing will ruin your day so i got the turbo off the car as you can see first thing i noticed is after i pulled it off i'm like hmm looks like i broke a piece of plastic so i'm like yeah no big deal we'll just you know get a new one we'll replace it but then i take this sleeve off see how that looks melted and look inside of here That plastic that is inside of there looks like it's melted completely closed so i think this thing had already failed before i touched it and that's why the turbo failed because i want to say this is the oil inlet right here and this is where the oil drains back into the engine or oil pan whatever looking at this it looks like the oil couldn't properly drain back so no surprise that this turbo failed so i checked on amazon and i could actually get this part for like maybe 26 27 dollars so not too bad right pretty uh inexpensive and if you got amazon prime it actually comes in pretty fast i think i could get it as soon as uh look at that Ooh. i tell you know what technology amazon look at that i knew amazon prime was fast but not that fast Jeez louise no, I'm just joking. I actually went out to the dealer and got this. So this is a OEM part. Uh, not too bad. It was like $42 or something like that. $41. Eh, not bad. It's a little bit more than Amazon. But you get it right away. And it's a OEM part. If we look at the new turbo assembly. You can see the turbine sitting right there. You see it? Or the impeller. Whatever the hell you want to call it. And I could actually spin that by hand if I wanted to. Get my finger here. See that? It's been super smooth. Look at the old one. I mean, is is the part missing? Is it broken off? Is it a different design? I have no idea. This is only the second tur turbocharger I've ever changed on one of these cars. The first one did have an impeller right here, just like this one does. So, if you look closely in the center right there, it looks like there should be some sort of a shaft. And maybe this end snapped off. I have no idea if it did break off where the hell did it go it's not gonna go up here there's no way in hell it's gonna fit past inside of there you get what i'm saying you would think the logical thing right is it just went out the exhaust but here's a catalytic converter and i put my hand inside of here don't worry it's not hot put my hand inside of here feel all around there is no metal piece inside of here it's like that honeycomb right there for the converter is intact 100 percent no damage at all to it and the tube to feed the oil right here we have to make sure this thing is clean if you look inside of there you can see a lot of crap inside of there so you know what let's do it guys i'm gonna take one for the team i'm gonna give it the classic bj so i'm gonna blow on this side let's see if it comes out the other end hopefully it does if it doesn't also this is what contributes to a turbo failing nope guys this thing is completely plugged i can't even blow through that oh it's horrible oil in my mouth there's a lot of things here guys uh, i know some of you're gonna be disappointed oh he's not showing how to change the turbo this is a shitty video thumbs down because i always got that one or two people who give all my videos a thumbs down don't think i haven't noticed guys and i appreciate you watching even if you give it a thumbs down i don't give a crap <laughs> but here's the thing sometimes information like this is more valuable than showing than someone showing you how to change nuts and bolts right how to remove nuts and bolts how to change a part 
Because even if you manage to change the turbo all by yourself because you watched the video, and there's other videos, you can watch someone else's video on how to change a complete DIY and how to do this, okay? But let's just say you follow their video step by step and you got a new turbo put on your car all by yourself. I'm happy for you. But if you miss important steps like this, okay, like this tube being clogged or the drain bag tube being uh, melted together or broken or whatever, if you miss steps like this, your brand new turbo is doomed to fail very soon. Just be really careful when you're doing things like this. You have to pay attention to the small details. Another thing I learned is from now on, if I ever do one of these turbos again, I'm automatically buying a drain bag tube. It's, it's just part of the job as far as I'm concerned. They become brittle, dry rotted over time and just extremely brittle from the heat. As far as I'm concerned, it's a maintenance part. Change it every time you change the turbo. It makes doing the job way easier and the job's gonna get done right. If you want to, even buy this part brand new. But we don't have that luxury at this moment, so we have to go ahead and completely clean this out and make sure it's working and oil could get through it. So I got that part sitting in some brake parts cleaner and you can see all the crap that's fallen out of it so far. I wish I had a larger container, like something more uh, vertical to just stand it up in, but I don't. So I'm just doing what I can. I'm just letting it sit for now and like occasionally blowing compressed air through it. But in the meantime, I had to remove the old drain tube. So you can see, I got it out already. It went right inside of that hole right there. And it pretty much came out in pieces. This thing is completely brittle and just every time you touch it, everything breaks on it. So I got the new drain tube installed on the new turbo. Just gonna let that sit for now. But right now, the biggest issue I have is a mating surface right here. You can see this looks like crap. I could already hear exhaust leaks if I just go ahead and put the new gasket on this. So what I want to try to do is, let's see if I could remove, you can see two of the studs came out already. But I want to see, or three of them, I want to see if I could get out the rest of the studs. And then we'll have a nice flat surface to work with and try to clean that up so that we know we're not going to have any leaks. Before I start cleaning all that crap up, I'm going to go ahead and plug off the little oil return line hole over there so no crap falls inside of there and I'll try to plug this up right here. So here we have this one and there goes the other one. That's good enough. Now let's see if I can extract these studs. I got all of the studs out except for one. This one in the lower left hand corner. That thing's on there real good and I didn't want to risk damaging the stud. It's not worth it. Uh, it's not a big deal. It's out of the way. Okay, so I'm all done cleaning the surface and it looks pretty good to me. I did blow out each of the holes where the studs are going to go to clean up the threads. So it's ready to get the studs put back on it and put the new gasket on it. You know what I just thought about? How we were talking about the impeller on the old turbo, how it's not really there. <laughs> and I'm like, well, if it did fall off, it would be in the catalytic converter. Well, I can see it's missing a bolt right here. You can see there should be a, some sort of fastener holding this converter in place, but it's missing. That tells me someone's been in here and now that I look at it, that heat shield on the catalytic converter down there does look pretty new. The bolts are nice and shiny. So here's what happened guys. Turbo was destroyed. Uh, the impeller broke off of it. It did fall into the catalytic converter and at some point this thing got a new converter put into it. I'm pretty sure whatever muffler shop did this work, when they dropped the catalytic converter, I'm pretty sure they found the broken piece off of the turbo inside of the converter and they said up oh, not our problem we're only here to do this one thing you know what i mean <laughs> so yeah i think it's all starting to make sense the next thing i have to do is remove both of the coolant lines off of the turbo so one's going to be an inlet one's going to be an outlet and they just send coolant into the turbo to keep it cool so it doesn't overheat and that's its main purpose all right of course once these lines are off the car you want to check them again for obstructions make sure they can flow coolant uh and maybe I'll go ahead and clean them up a little bit while they're off of the old turbo before I put them on the new part. Now the new oil return, you see it has two O-rings on it. You want to make sure it has a nice decent coat of fresh oil on them. So that when it slides into the block, it doesn't uh, tear any of the O-rings. So I checked both the line. There are no restrictions at all. Got them both installed. They're nice and snug just how they should be. And that's it. This thing is pretty much ready to go back on the car. So I'm making some progress here, but unfortunately I want to put on the clamp for the turbo and it snapped right there. 
and it really needs to be held together like that because clamping this side alone isn't going to do anything. I hate working on pieces of It's so frustrating. The only thing I can think of right now is to go ahead and weld these two little tabs, weld them back together. Alright, I'm all done welding it. Just two blobs right there, nothing fancy. And so far I tried expanding it and it hasn't fallen apart yet. So, I'm going to try to get it on the engine. And success. The clamp is on. The bolt's on it. Everything's tightened down. Now, I just uh, tightened the bolt till it was nice and snug. You don't want to go crazy. Last thing you want to do is either break your weld or break that just uh, connecting piece once again. Then you'll be having to weld it once again. <laughs> so, it's definitely nice and snug. Okay, so I've been using... Like the straws that come with the brake parts cleaner and shoving it inside of here because it's going to bend and contour to the shape of the pipe. And I was able to get like this far until I felt an obstruction. And then when I come from the bottom side, kind of like the same thing like right here, then there's an obstruction. So I just kept spraying brake parts cleaner inside of there. And I mean that might work, you'll probably get there eventually, but it's just taking way too long. So I got the bright idea to put it in the vise here and heat it up. I'm like if there's a ton of carbon inside of there. Let's heat it up, make it soft, and maybe we could blow it out or whatever, right? So I grab the map gas, and I'm here heating up only the center of the pipe, and then I start to hear like a crack and a pop. I'm like, what the hell is that? Anyways, I kept going. Before I knew it, big cloud shot out of here. This thing moved back about a, a good inch and a half from where it's headed in the vise. And this thing sounded like a freaking black cat firework went off in the garage. It scared the hell out of me. I wish I had the camera rolling just so you guys could laugh at me. I was not expecting it. I basically created like a little mini bomb going on right here. It just exploded. Saw the biggest cloud of smoke come out of here. If there is an obstruction here, obstruction here, and you're heating this up, you're building up a ton of pressure inside of there. Something's got to give, right? Wow, that was a loud explosion. I was not expecting that. <laughs> my, my hands are shaking right now. I can't even. <laughs> so I found a brand new container of mineral spirits. Not sure if it's going to do anything, but I figured I'd give it a shot. So I poured it into this container. And as you can see, I'm just letting the part soak in it. I'm going to go take my lunch break right now. So I should be here for maybe like a half hour or so. Still having a hard time getting the carbon out this thing. Carbon is mainly like right here in this section. Everything else is free. It's just some obstruction right there. So that's why I was heating it up. And I wanted to stay as far away as possible from it. All right, so I'm making really good progress. I got it to the point where if I put brake fluid in here, it actually comes out here. Same thing with compressed air, it comes out, but it's just not flowing great. Uh, it makes it through, just not flowing great, and that's not good. We're almost there. Just a little bit more work to do. I mean, she's uh, she's taking it pretty deep. Look how, you know, let me show you. This is how long this zip tie is, okay? And look at where we're at. Yep. Enough to make a man proud. Look at that. And honestly, I should have asked about the part when I went to the dealer, but it completely slipped my mind. Alright guys, so it's now the next day, and honestly, last night, it got into like 9 p.m., still messing with that pipe, and it wasn't happening. Like I said, a little bit of brake parts cleaner was getting past, a little bit of compressed air, but I know it's not enough for oil to get past. It would create a restriction. It wasn't comfortable putting that part on a car, okay? So I looked on Amazon, and it's a freaking $23 part. Today is Sunday. It says it could be delivered by Monday. Now, unfortunately, the lady wanted her car back by today, Sunday. But I told her, hey, the car really needs this part. So unfortunately, you're going to have to wait till Monday for your car. So she said, all right. And that's where we are. Ordered the part. Now we're just waiting for that new tube to come in before I put the rest of this stuff back together. Uh, I'm just, I'm upset with myself that I just didn't throw in the towel sooner. I kept trying and trying and trying, just wasting my time. You know, here I am trying to save someone freaking 23 bucks, but it's here costing me a few hours of my time. You know what I mean? You got to figure what's your, what's your time worth? You know what I mean? Here's what I'm taking away from this whole experience. Whenever I'm replacing another turbo on these Ecotec engines, automatically it's getting that oil return line, the one we went to the dealer to get, as well as the pipe I just ordered off of Amazon. Both of those parts are going to be ordered automatically and included whenever I have to buy someone a turbo. This whole job could have been done the same day in just a handful of hours. There's no reason for this car to sit here 
uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. No reason at all for stupid little parts. So I hope you understand why whenever I do this job, I'm going to order all those parts together. And honestly, if you're doing this job, do yourself a favor, get those parts. Save yourself a ton of time and headache. So it's Sunday evening. I'm still waiting on that part from Amazon. Like I said, it'll come in on Monday. But I told Arnold, hey, I really want to do an oil change on this thing so that the new turbo has fresh oil. Okay, because she told me she's only had this car for about three months. And she said when she first got it, she took it in for an oil change. And whoever changed the oil, they told her, hey, whoever had this car before you, they did not change the oil when they were supposed to. So I don't know what they saw. Maybe it was on a filter. Maybe the oil that came out, the, the, the oil pan. I don't know what they saw. Or maybe just the, they looked at the turbo or whatever the hell. And they told her, yeah, whoever had this car before you, yeah, they weren't doing this car any favors. So that's when I told her the lack of oil changes is most likely what caused this turbo to fail. And she goes, okay, yeah, that all makes sense. So that's why I told her I really want to change the oil on this thing. Can we go ahead and get this done? And she said, well, I got no ride. So what I'll do is I'll pick up the car from you when, when you're done fixing it. I'll go get the oil and bring it back. I told her, well, I'm really trying to avoid running the nasty oil that's inside of this engine through the brand new turbo. When this thing starts off for the first time, I want fresh oil pumping through this thing. So I told her, here's what I'll do. I'll go out to AutoZone and I'll get the oil and the filter. You just pay for the, you know, pay for the oil and the filter. And I'll do the labor for free. I'm not going to charge her any extra labor. I'm just going to include it as part of the labor of changing the turbo. So she agreed to all of that. And um, yeah, so that's where we are. Got the new oil, new filter. If I didn't care about this car, I would have just slapped a new turbo on, reused the same drain back tube, and reused the oil inlet tube, which was clogged, and start this car up with the nasty oil that's in it not caring about nothing, collect my money, and just send this person down the road. At that point, this brand new turbo was doomed to fail right from the very beginning. So yes, I do care about people's cars, and it's why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's to get the thing fixed right. I'm sorry I have to call people and tell them, hey, it's going to be an additional $23. Hey, it's going to be an additional $42. But at the end of the day, this thing has to be fixed correctly. Reinstalled the oxygen sensor. Put our air intake tube back on, plugged in the master flow sensor, connect the coolant lines. I put brand new coolant in the system. I did a oil change, changed the filter. Uh, this is the last part I have to put on the server. It goes right here, but the line goes down here first. So I got to put that new line on that I'm waiting for before I could put this on. Here's the oil that came out the engine. Honestly, it doesn't look too bad. Kind of matches up with what the owner said that she got an oil change just a couple of months ago like soon after she got the car so the filter looks pretty good and the oil just looks uh just normal don't see anything crazy here all right guys so we finally got the package in straight from the mainland you can see we got two new o-rings for it here's the pipe itself and let's give it the classic blow test yep straight through no issues at all just how it should be Let's go ahead and get this bad boy installed. We'll put a little bit of fresh oil right there on those two O-rings before we put it in place. And it should be all set. Unfortunately, I can't take the car for a test drive right now because I got this piece of crap Dodge Durango right there doing that upper control arm. I'm sure you guys have already seen it in other videos probably or not, who knows. I thought this part was gonna come in super late today for some reason. So now I have to knock out that upper control arm before I could ever test drive this one and make sure everything's okay. It's pretty much all set. The only thing that has to go back on this car is the heat shield, which would sit like right here and the front license plate. But I'm gonna wait on that heat shield. Let's uh, start it up right now and check for leaks. Hopefully no leaks. So here goes the very first startup. <laughs> See if they're gonna start up or blow up, who knows. So far, no weird noises. All right, so far, so good. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and just let it warm up here. So it did not take long for the check engine light to turn on. It was almost immediately after I turned the car on. We have a engine coolant thermostat heater control circuit. It's the only code we have. And I think that might be right there. And I never unplugged that, so. I'm not really too concerned about it. Basically, 
it's an issue that has nothing to do with what I did. I never touched it and obviously it's still plugged in. I looked at everything else. There's nothing else that I could have unplugged that I forgot to plug back in. Because you would figure it says a uh, circuit high. So you would figure like an open, right? Or something's not plugged in. But I looked over everything and I can't find any signs. Everything looks like it's plugged in. And I'm pretty sure. Oh, that just might be the coolant temperature sensor. I would have to look up where this part is located, see what they're talking about. And just some real quick research shows me that that's basically a thermostat problem. I'm not concerned with that at all. That problem was already there. The owner told me if I notice something else that needs to get fixed, just let her know and she'll take care of it later on. Not right now, of course, because this is already costing her way too much money. So I got that Durango all knocked out. You can see I moved it out of the way. So let's take out this Chevy for a test drive. All right, guys, so I haven't even been driving for 30 seconds and I could already tell a massive improvement. This thing is pretty quick. <laughs> Just like with partial throttle, it accelerates already way faster than before with the old turbo and you, if you just floored it. Yeah, this thing's uh, it's moving pretty quick now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go this way. This is where I came last time. And I'm just gonna go ahead and floor it. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> all right, that's it. There's. I don't like speeding around here, all right? But clear to see, this thing got up and went. Crazy how big of a difference a turbo makes. You gotta figure these things are little, what, like 1.4 cylinders? So they don't got much power to begin with, and if you rob them of their turbo, uh, <laughs> these things are snails. So I'm really happy that we got a brand new oil return line and a oil feed line that's no longer being restricted. Uh, and also that the owner gave me a green light to change the oil on it so that it just you know it gives this new turbo the best chances as far as how long it's going to last and i'm actually really happy with the way this one turned out even though it got kind of expensive for the owner you know but it is what it is that's uh that's how big repairs go sometimes there's always you should always budget for the extra stuff of course i know that but a lot of people who are paying to get their car fixed they don't know that you know they figure oh well he said this is the price and that's going to be it and 100 percent it's going to be 100 percent once it's done and blah 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 uh sometimes you run into little issues here and there where you know it's gonna cost you a little bit more money and one more thing before i go now that this thing is like speed racer now tearing up the pavement i noticed that it's gonna need some brakes <laughs> not that the brakes are bad or grinding or anything but this thing feels so much faster now that once you get up to speed you try to slow it down and it feels like you got to push the pedal kind of hard to get this thing to stop uh so yeah i don't think it'll be long before this thing needs brakes so I brought the car back to the garage uh, to put that heat shield on the exhaust manifold and to put the front license plate on it. And another thing is the owner just, because I told her, hey, the car's ready, you could come pick it up. And she was like, hey, can you can you look into why my AC doesn't work? So I get in the car and I'm like, the AC works just fine. It's blowing nice and cold. So she said it didn't work before. So what I'm thinking is uh, because of all the engine faults it disabled the AC because the AC is not a necessity It's a luxury, you know, so I think that's what was going on and now that the turbos working and it's not throwing any of those codes like lean codes under boost pressure codes and blah 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 That it's now allowing the AC to work. I hope all that makes sense uh, So I told her hey your AC is not working. It's blowing nice and cold the car is way faster So she was like really happy because you kind of killed two birds at one stone here. You know what I mean? One final inspection here before I put the heat shield on. Everything looks good. I don't hear or see any leaks. Everything's nice and dry. So I think we are a-okay to put this heat shield back on. The coolant is still at a good level right there. You can see it. So that's it, guys. I put the front plate on it, put the heat shield on it. Everything's all set. Took it out for one final test drive. AC is blowing nice and cold. Car still drives fast as hell. Well, I don't want to say fast as hell. It's a little four cylinder you know but <laughs> you get what i'm trying to say so i finally got around to disassembling this turbo you can see it's all in pieces here uh so first of all look at this look how chewed up this thing is ton of play in the shaft you should basically have two of these 
one on this side and one on this side because the exhaust gases come out the engine and they turn this side which transfers that energy via the shaft to this side which forces the air into the engine. So there should be two of these and this one's completely missing as we already saw before. That's absolutely crazy though. Failed turbo and it's all because of oil starvation.